The trial of Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp. Depp was the clear winner, but some are saying this proves the Me Too movement is dead. But is it? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online. And it's official. The Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial is finally over, which means after six long weeks, I can finally scroll through Instagram again without getting mashups of the trial. You know things were weird when Amber Heard's lawyers asked questions like this. Is Disney aware that Mr. Depp has testified under oath that he would not take another Pirates of the Caribbean franchise role for $300 million and a million alpacas? No. Would Disney entertain paying Mr. Depp more than $300 million and provide him with more than a million alpacas to be able to obtain his uh, services for any future Pirates to the Caribbean role. No. That's insane. Who wouldn't want a million alpacas? I mean, look at these guts. Clearly, alpaca Pirates of the Caribbean is the only way to reboot this franchise. So maybe alpacas don't actually have a lot to do with defamation, but it did give the media an opportunity to write lots of clickbait articles about Johnny Depp and alpacas, which is the most important part. Not to mention that video clip got almost 5 million views on YouTube. I must be covering the wrong topics here on America Uncovered. It's time to give people what they want. Our new channel, Alpacas Unshorn. What's that, Shelley? People weren't watching the trial for the alpacas. Then why were they watching? That wasn't rhetorical, I'm actually asking. I've had earplugs in for six weeks. What's that, Shelley? Just give me the highlights. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, what, re really in their bed? God, thanks for telling me, I think. Man, that bed thing was wild. It's probably the second worst thing to happen to Johnny Depp involving a bed. So back in 2018, the Washington Post published this op-ed. The byline says Amber Heard, Johnny Depp's ex-wife. But it turns out it was actually written by the ACLU, and time for the release of Aquaman. That's after the ACLU had made Amber Heard an ambassador for sexual assault and domestic violence issues. The op-ed never mentioned Johnny Depp by name. What it does say is that two years ago, Amber Heard became a public figure representing domestic abuse. Two years would have been 2016, which is when Heard and Depp got divorced, and also when she filed for a restraining order. Depp's lawyer argued this is a clear reference to domestic abuse during their marriage. Unless she was talking about some other guy she dated who wears guy liner all the time and collects more rings than Sonic the Hedgehog. Depp's lawyers also argued that his career took a hit because of it. He ended up not being cast in another Pirates of the Caribbean movie, although whether that was related to Heard's op-ed was a part of the dispute. Depp sued Heard for $50 million for defamation. She countersued for $100 million also for defamation. The jury ruled in favor of Depp and awarded him about $10 million. But they also found one of Amber Heard's claims credible and awarded her $2 million. Not because Johnny Depp defamed her, but because one of his lawyers did. So the whole thing should have ended there. But it hasn't. Because after the media was done writing clickbait articles about what the verdict was, they still had to squeeze every possible juicy angle from this trial. I'll tell you how after the break. Welcome back. The Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial is over, but it will never be over as long as the media has anything to say about it. And what they have to say now is that this trial is about the end of the Me Too movement. Hold on. These two celebrities obviously had a terrible marriage and their own issues. Shouldn't we look at the case on its own merits and not extrapolate wildly? <laughs> nah, let's use it to fight the culture wars. Heck, a hostile country being able to build a nuke wouldn't even be enough to stop those headlines. Literally, that's literally happening, and it's not getting nearly as much coverage. 
But even the founder of the Me Too movement says the Depp Heard trial is not a hashtag Me Too story. She wrote that the trial was not about sexual violence at its core. What we experienced in the Depp Heard trial was a public retelling of intimate partner violence between two privileged white celebrities. So she's basically saying that this trial isn't about a woman being abused and then being silenced by her abuser. It's about a couple's dysfunction spilling into our social media feeds. Hashtag cancel Johnny Depp and Amber Heard from my newsfeed. Well, I say what the trial was actually about was the media covering it nonstop and making a ton of money off of the ad revenue, which is financially accurate. But you know who disagrees with the founder of Me Too? Amber Heard. Heard said the trial verdict sets back the clock to a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. I'm not sure who she's saying isn't taking violence against women seriously here. She just had six weeks in court. Is she talking about the hashtags Amber Turd and Me Poo trending? If so, she only has herself, I mean her dog, to thank. I'm surprised so many people are pointing fingers at Amber Heard, mostly because I'd be too afraid of getting the tip of my finger sliced off. Heard also wrote that I seem to have lost a right I thought I had as an American to speak freely and openly. Based on some of those tapes, maybe she should have spoken a little less freely and openly. But it's kind of wild that Amber Heard is claiming that her losing a defamation case is eroding free speech. Now, it's important to point out that Johnny Depp did not come out of this smelling like roses. He clearly has substance abuse issues. And he's on record calling Amber Heard terrible things that I'm definitely not going to repeat. But Depp apparently found this all worth it. He says he hopes that people will return to being treated as innocent until proven guilty, both in the courts and the media. Amazing. After a lifetime in the spotlight, he still thinks the media ever treated people as innocent until proven guilty. And after this final break, where you stand on this issue could have a lot to do with how you see me too. Welcome back. There is a lot of debate about what the Depp versus Heard case means for the Me Too movement. Celebrities are divided over whether it's dead. Experts are divided over what it means. The galactic empire of Gornthos is just as divided. Even 12 galaxies over, this is all they can talk about. But how people feel about how the Depp Heard trial relates to Me Too also depends on how they feel about Me Too. Is it a long overdue movement that empowered abused women and took down powerful scumbags like Harvey Weinstein? Or is it a toxic movement that should be defeated? The New York Post called it a toxic, female-fueled revolution that got drunk on its own reckless and absolute power, a massive, blunt instrument used to punish sometimes innocent people. And you know who agrees with the conservative New York Post? The World Socialist website. Socialists agreeing with conservatives? Clearly, there's only one thing that can unite people across the political spectrum. Cringing at what Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp's bed. Some say this trial is a loss for Believe Women or Believe All Women. Was Believe All Women all the time ever the goal, though? What about women who lie? Should we just take every woman at their word? That's why even some Me Too supporters say that Believe Women is a trap. Others are worried it will keep victims of sexual assault from coming forward. Amber Heard also lost the case in the court of public opinion. On TikTok, the hashtag Justice for Johnny Depp tag had more than 6.8 billion views on May 3rd, while the hashtag I Stand with Amber Heard tag had just 2.4 million views. And some say the social media attack on Heard could make women think twice about coming forward with abuse allegations. And there were some, shall we say, not so nice memes about Heard. That's actually one of the nicer ones. Come on, when have memes ever helped anyone win anything? Besides Donald Trump winning the presidency. But what Me Too advocates are also worried about is that this case will inspire abusers to go after their victims with defamation lawsuits. Even though this is a very, very high profile case, it's not singular. We have seen, seen other instances in which 
defamation lawsuits have been brought against women who came forward with Me Too allegations. So that's a very scary prospect. Defamation lawsuits are scary, especially when they're weaponized. That's why I would never, ever, not once in a million years, say that Amber Heard looks like a former high school cheerleader that never spoke to you, but now won't stop sending Facebook messages asking you to join her MLM scheme. Or that Johnny Depp looks like a divorced archaeologist. I'd never say anything like that. So there is cause to think this trial might have a chilling effect on people coming forward. But not everyone thinks that will be the effect. Carrie Baker, a professor at Smith College, says it could have the opposite effect. She gives the example of Anita Hill. Hill accused Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment during his confirmation Supreme Court hearings. She didn't exactly get glowing media coverage at the time. People thought women aren't going to report sexual harassment anymore because they will be intimidated, but the exact opposite actually happened. So you never know. The verdict could be the opposite of chilling. It could be warming. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe seeing a celebrity like Heard fighting her case in court will inspire some women. Or maybe they'll see her poor performance and think, I really have to go to a better acting school than her. Or maybe this will become a We Too movement, where we stop canceling each other after one accusation and no evidence. Nah, probably not. The founder of Me Too says the movement is still going strong and can't be stopped. Meanwhile, Amber Heard is appealing the jury's decision. Does anyone else just want to see the end of this trial already? Me too. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark was recently rated editor's choice for the best VPN for privacy and security by PC Mag. That's because Surfshark can protect you from hackers, corporate trackers, and government surveillance when you go online. You might think that only authoritarian countries like China and Russia monitor their citizens' internet behavior, but guess what? The US government does it too. That's why Surfshark keeps a server in the British Virgin Islands. You can use that for maximum privacy because the laws there allow Surfshark to not keep any user data logs. And not only is Surfshark a great VPN, it also has an excellent new antivirus feature. It can scan your devices for viruses and malware. It can do it in real time, too. When you download or install software, it can warn you right away if there's a potential threat. And when I say it can protect your devices, I mean all your devices. Because unlike a lot of other VPNs, with Surfshark, one single account lets you run it on as many devices as you want. Computers, iPads, cell phones, all your stuff. So if you haven't yet, check out Surfshark. Surfshark has always offered our fans a great deal, but this month, it's even better. When you sign up using the link below, you'll get 83% off a two-year plan, plus three extra months for free, plus the new Surfshark antivirus for free. So go to surfshark.com uncovered and use the code uncovered to secure this deal. The link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.